than any of the research papers at Monash. But I must tell you a little story. In 1992, Celia came up to Canberra uh, when they were presenting the Queen with the second volume. They'd already presented the Queen with the first volume. They were presenting the Queen with the second volume. And um, there was to be a, a reception in the Great Hall. And I said to Celia, you better come the night before and stay with me so you don't get, we don't get fog bound and you miss out. So Celia came and she said, I'm very nervous about this. And I said, Celia, in that room will be ambassadors and there'll be consuls and there'll be prime minister, a prime minister and there'll be prime ministers in waiting and there'll be ex-prime ministers. And I said, and there'll be hundreds of people hoping to be remembered in posterity. And I said, there'll only be two of you. The Queen is the longest uh, reigning monarch in this century and Celia Rossa. So what are you worried about? <laughs> and I have to tell you that professors come and go and vice chancellors will come and go, just as prime ministers and consuls. But Celia Ross, Ross's work will last forever. And I think that all of us would love to be remembered in the future. <laughs> I guess all of us would like that somebody down the track might remember us, some offspring or some niece or nephew or um, might remember us vaguely or see a paper that we wrote or even for me, get some speech out of Hansard and drag it out when they're doing a PhD. <laughs> but nobody, and I, I think I challenge you, nobody in this room will be remembered in 200 years time or 300 years time or 400 years time other than Celia Ross's Banksias. And they will be, I think, the greatest contribution to botanical art this century, if not ever. And I, am, have, I have been very privileged, and I think of all the things that people say to me, what was one of the experiences that was important to you in your 25 years association with Monash? It would be my friendship with Celia, because part of me is in a couple of these little Banksias. I used to ring her occasionally and say, now, Celia, how's it going? She said, oh, OK, something, you know. I'd say, look, so you're just colouring in. Get on with it. <laughs> you know, you've drawn down um, erisophilia. Just colour it in. And um, then she'd get cross with me. I'm not just colouring in. I'd say, yes, you are. <laughs> but what colouring in it is. And what a great tribute to the patience and the dedication and the persistence with some ups and downs um, that Celia's shown in actually completing this work. And there's bits of humour in it. There's the Banksia with the, with the little eyes and the mouth that's smiling. Um, I hope that somebody, and if any of you know somebody who writes, I would love to see Celia's story told now. And uh, I've sat and, and, and always regretted when she's got into a mode of telling you about some of the things that have happened on collections and some of those things are quite funny about snakes and about wind and about trees and about people up mountains. and. Um, they all ought to be recorded and written down, and I regret that I haven't even had a tape recorder when we've done that, so that the story of the behind the banks is, is told, and that, that, that people understand how Celia um, does the drawings, builds on them, traces them, draws them down, does a, um, a, a rough a, 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 a colour a colour uh, um, a working draw a working what do you call working drawing working painting what do you call them colour up a colour up. Um, and as the ability to photostat the whole painting really enabled Celia to be able to do those colour ups uh, in much more detail, uh, that story ought to be told and recorded. And I hope that that's one part, next part of the Banksia project because it's a story that really deserves um, to be preserved. I, I, I take my hat off and salute, as I'm sure every person here, Celia, and I think it's a great credit to you that so many people are here tonight to honour you and to congratulate you and to feel that we're going to have a part of this, a little bit of each of us will go on down in, in history with these wonderful Banksias. And to say how proud I know your family are of you, I was just talking to your granddaughter and she said, I'm so proud I feel like I could cry. Um, it's, they're proud of you. You have done a wonderful job. You've done yourself proud. You've done Monash proud. And you've done the artistic community proud. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs>
you raised the question of celia the person and what better person to talk about that than one of her family. Andrew? Yes, um, it's very proud for me to be standing here in front of you all today, in more words than one. And on behalf of all the children, we're extremely proud of our mother for being an extremely fantastic mother the whole way through this project. And uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. And <clears throat> there are 76,000 words that she's <laughs> created. And uh, I'd like to present the great artist herself, my mother, Celia Rosser. Well, isn't it wonderful to see so many people here? And thank you so much for everyone here who's supported me in some way or another through my uh, epic journey through the Banksias. The, um, the very last one I painted was Banksia Epica, which was named, <laughs> was named after John Eyre's epic walk between South Australia and Western Australia when he nearly died, I think, on the, in the effort. And um, we were at the, uh, the sp almost the same spot where he was a hundred and something years before, and almost to the same day, and Alex George read out of his journal to say how wonderful he could see a Banksia, and I must be near Esperance. And I can tell you he was nowhere near <laughs> Esperance. <laughs> It was on the um, Great Australian Bart and it was one of the most exciting field trips in a way. It was spoilt a little bit because um, Alex said at three o'clock when I was going to sit down to do my colour notes, oh, we must go now. And we, were, um, we had to drive along the, um, the Nullarbor to a, a certain mileage, which I can't remember, and then we just turned right into the bush and it took us three hours to do a few kilometres, about 90 kilometres, I think, to find this spot. And it was, um, there were three of us and um, not one person had ever been there before. So we were driving by the compass and it was very exciting to uh, find this banks here. But when it was time to go, and I, I kicked up a fuss and said, oh, I really wanted to... Uh, do my colour notes and Alex said no at five o'clock it will be pitch black. It was in May and uh, it was pitch black by five o'clock and we were just 